I think it's murder. I mean, clearly it's murder. What can I do to help? That's me. But February, I mean, that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? I didn't murder Simon. You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. Simon. Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work. Mirror making, feature windows, artistic things. Really beautiful things. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. If his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, I bought a photo. They said a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. It's the best one I have. It's the Rockington Arms. The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with, and the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. 
No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? Um, when I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street. There's a girl and she's staring out of the window. She's sad. She's trapped. She's here. She's looking out the window because her mother won't let her out. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince and Mother Gothel is furious so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here so that's already happened. But she throws her into the wilderness and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince who's blind. But she kills him with her tears and so it's a happy ending. <laughs> is that too much? I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. She was a girl, by the way, the baby. We were going to call her Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana, but I didn't want her to have a symmetrical name. My mother called me Eve. Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to hear the story? It's a real life fairy tale. Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. Yes, we'd fight. We fought on the beach once, and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around, it was at the far end of the beach, and I held her head under, and I kept it out. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her, and watch her drown. But that was it, it was just a moment. We made up afterwards. It was a love-hate relationship. Police station. Yeah, when I was young, we ran away on my birthday. 
Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd saved money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up from the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. So my parents let me off. My name is Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H. It's Pandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work if you mirror it though, it's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. Mm. She recognized me from the window. She told me to come inside, and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. It was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. Yes. I inherited it from my parents, so it made sense to move back, me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways, before the pregnancy. Reminded me of being a girl, a dollhouse in the attic, old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. Yes, I read a lot as a child and watched lots of TV. Then the doll's house we had, we still have in the attic. It's kind of a fairy castle. We used to play up there and make up our own stories. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they? We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? Yeah. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it. It was so huge. 
It must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It is a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale. Little furniture. The lights work. Mirrors, beds, big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing in it. We invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork for them all. Passports, diaries, we gave them all really elaborate stories. Once a moth got trapped in there, we'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. <laughs> the legal stuff was completed very quickly. Hand moved back in with Simon. Eric gave Simon the week off to help with the move. He decorated, modernised wallpaper curtains. Hannah insists the attic be left as it was, dollhouse and all. Simon never went up there. Differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm. She is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to... A bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took it in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous. Didn't want to share. Even the first date. We went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went. Kept changing places in the toilet. We only had the one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me. But that was it. We didn't want another car on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules. Deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean, that's when she got pregnant. From that one time. The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow. So we were separated again. If I stayed in the attic, it was hard. It's like I suddenly didn't exist. I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. 
Hannah and I would meet up in the park. And I was trying to get pregnant. But I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers. Drug guys I'd met in clubs, parks and alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hearty look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. Hannah had a miscarriage. This was late in the pregnancy, and it left her infertile. felt like the universe had corrected its course. We were aligned again. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Derek had given him a full-time position after he left school. And then Was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. <laughs> we were 15. No. I was 15, Carl was older, 17 I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once, it was stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realise who's really important to you, you know? Family. Family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. No, he doesn't have any tattoos. He has a scar down here near his stomach, past his hip. Cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. He looks just like the photo. Um, he's not got his glasses on here though. He takes them off with the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know. He has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. 
not books so much, or watching TV. Who likes TV? Oh, my tattoo. <laughs> I got it to express my individuality. It's an apple and a snake. <laughs> so I moved out. Got a small bed set. Got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in a bar in the evenings. So I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any roots. I don't exist. He saw me singing one of my shows, Pure Chance. Not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously I knew who he was. But he didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. He guessed my name from my tattoo. <laughs> Told me it was a palindrome, but that would impress me. I enjoyed talking to him. It was amazing to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream. It wasn't the presence so much, it was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He didn't grade the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. Bruce. Oh, yeah, no, it's nothing. I was going through the top cupboard in my kitchen and the chair slipped and I kind of hit the door with my face. I mean, I like hell. Thanks. No sugar. Sweet enough as it is. A mobile phone? Yeah. Well, they have one for the glaciers, but it's only for work. I can't remember the number. Oh, it's in the kitchen. I saw it plugged into its charging cradle. So, it was Friday evening, we had an argument, he left. On Saturday he didn't come back, I waited all day, 